going to talk about uh, getting some patterns together for your laser and I had a lot of uh, quite a few questions on this sign that I did a video on here a while back where did you get the pattern for the saw blade look well I took the saw blade put it on a piece of paper traced around it with a number two pencil or it might have been HB soft lead pencil carefully traced around it so there weren't any openings or anything it had to be subtle all the way around then I put it on a scanner and scanned it and saved it as a JPEG then imported that JPEG into uh, Inkscape converted it to an SVG and then brought that into Lightburn and I'll kind of go over on the computer here what, what I'm doing there uh, it, it all sounds complicated but it's not if uh, your particular scanner has the ability to save the scan to an SVG that'll save you a step otherwise you can save it as a JPEG or a PNG put it into a program like Inkscape turn it into an SVG and then you will have pattern that you can resize and this is obviously bigger than this is but you can't put that on a piece of notebook paper but one of the nice things about an SVG file is uh, because it's all vectors it's very easy to make it larger or smaller so another thing I wanted to bring up was uh, where you can get some of these patterns and you know projects to make uh, don't overlook things like scroll saw books I have a scroll saw that is back in the corner and I don't use it on thin material anymore I always use my laser but for three quarter inch on up um, I do still use my scroll saw so what I'm going to do is take one of these patterns here this one right over here and I'm going to make a two layer sign out of it and of course um, it's all going to be laser cut and I'm going to show you how I do this but first I need to scan this and there's no way for me to really show putting this on a scanner most uh, inkjet 3D printers anymore and a lot of laser jet 3D printers the all-in-one office ones have a scanner on them and that'll allow you to scan to uh, your computer or scan to a memory card or memory stick or whatever so I'm gonna get this scanned and then uh, we'll go on to the computer and I'll show you everything I need to do with it once you have your scan made you can bring it into Lightburn I'm gonna show another way here too using Inkscape to convert this to SVG but uh, here I have Lightburn open so I need to bring in my scan which is right here and that comes in as a JPEG now if you right click on that you're down here to trace image and you can adjust any settings there as you like but pretty much the default will be fine we'll have a little clutter to clean up but that's not a problem Let's click OK and that of course that deleted the original image so now I just need to get rid of some of this garbage here so to do that I need to ungroup this so we have these two lines right here get rid of that and we have a little clutter down here and we'll just delete that so now we can uh, use this as it is or we can export it so if you go up here to file you go down to export and of course I've already done this but you could call it front for example and it'll save it as an SVG um, we'll do uh, well I haven't done it on this one so boy fishing front layer Now for the back layer, all you have to do is delete everything inside. Then you can export that. The boy fishing back. So that's all there is to it. It's to uh, creating an SVG from a JPEG file. You can do it right in Lightburn. Okay, now I'll show you one here. What if you don't use Lightburn or don't have Lightburn or for whatever reason? It's a program called Inkscape. We'll grab that right here. You can bring that file 
into Inkscape. And then you go up here to File, Save As, and then it will become an SVG. We're going to call it the, uh, we'll just call it Image. So then you can bring that into whatever your program you're using. Of course, you have to edit out a little bit of a few things here and possibly uh, do an image trace to convert that uh, to not have all the exterior stuff. But that's just another way to do it. Uh, my preference, again, is to do it in light burn here. And I'll run through this again real quick. We'll start with a new project here. We'll bring in that image. Again, right click on it, trace image, and I have this to delete the original image after the trace. Go up here to ungroup, get rid of anything you don't want in there. Okay, now I'll point out one other thing, and depending on what uh, pattern you're, you are bringing in. If you blow this up, you'll notice there's a double line there. And you can delete those double lines. I'll go over here, for example, right here. Instead of having this double line, because your laser will make two passes there. You can just highlight one of those and take them out. Now this won't happen on every image, and if it's something you've traced yourself, you won't have that. But it's just something good to know. Always check your image when you scan something out of a book or magazine. So as you can see here, we have a whole bunch of little things here with the need to have uh, the interior deleted. It's the same as on the, uh, the outside of the image. You've got a double line. So I'm going to take out the inside line and just leave the outside line. But you kind of get the idea there. I've already done this on my the one I'm cutting. But uh, something to keep in mind that you may need to do. Always blow your image up. Take a look at it. So now we get over and take this to the lasers. Okay, I moved up here to the loft uh, in the laser room. And it's really hard to shoot video here because this room's so small. And i got so much stuff in here. But uh, hopefully you'll be able to see everything. I'm going to be using a We Create. Or not We Create. We're going to. going to be using the X-Tool S1, sitting right over here. I've got a piece of 8th inch plywood loaded up in there, and I have my uh, front layer loaded in the light burn. And we're going to frame this, and it should be fine, and then we're going to cut the front layer out. Okay, once I get everything framed, I need to do my focus. I've got a button set up in light burn for the focus. to go and I just hit start. Since I won't video the entire cutout here, oh, the time to cut out this front layer is 13 minutes and 13 seconds. And we're only 500 millimeters per minute and 60% power. So here's our front layer all cut out. piece of poke out right there. So there's our front layer. As you can see there's some pretty fine detail there and it's going to be a little bit fragile. When we get this on the back layer and get it stuck down it'll all be good. So I'll get this set up for the back layer and clean everything up. 
Okay, got my uh, other piece in there to make the back layer. Again, it's 500 millimeters per minute at 60% power. This is the 40 watt S1, not the 20. And I need to focus. And hit start, and away we go. This won't take near as long because there's no details on it, it's just the outside. It'll take uh, a minute and a half. And here's our back layer. Thought I had scorching there, but that's just a shadow from the light. Now I'll get these two pieces laid together. So here's our two layers, and I use the uh, little stripey side of that plywood for a little bit of contrast on the back, and you can paint that as you wish. If we don't like the uh, contrasty side, you can just flip this over and do some painting on that as you wish. Uh, I'd probably make most of the screen, paint my boy some color there, maybe something different in the fishing pole. Down here would be blue for water, and a lighter blue up here for the sky. And these would be tree branches, so they would be green. And this would be green for grass. Tree stump right there, probably a little brown in there. So there's something you can do with a scroll saw pattern. So just for fun, since the We Create uh, laser sits right next to my uh, S2 S1, we're going to make one of these on the We Create as well. Uh, I imported my SVG file that I converted in Inkscape into the We Create software, and I've got uh, that piece of plywood in there. And we're, this is set up for a three millimeter basswood. It's, it's plywood. It, it'll cut it just fine. And it is seven millimeters per second, 100% power one pass. So I'll get my focus done here, and then we will cut one on the We Create. Well, there's our two cutouts side by side. Uh, the one on the left over here was done on the X2 S1. This one here was done on the We Create Vision. Got a couple of differences here. Uh, the, the scorching on this one, I probably could have got rid of that if I would have cranked my speed up a little bit. Uh, but this was a 40 watt laser. This is a 20 watt laser. One thing you will get with a lower powered laser is better detail because the beam is smaller. Uh, you'll notice here, like on the fishing line, it's a little bit more defined. And if you look at the little, I guess you call a hair sticking out or whatever, on here, you'll see that it is not as well defined as it is with a 20 watt. So that's uh, something to keep in mind if you're looking to purchase a laser, is what you're going to use it for. If you're going to be doing something with fine detail, uh, you'll, you'll definitely want a 20 or 30 watt laser. Uh, 20 watts pretty much the sweet spot. Uh, you can do 3 millimeter plywood, of course, on a 10 watt laser as well. Uh, when you get up into the higher wattage lasers of 40 watt and so on, uh, the beam is larger and you won't get as fine a detail. Both of these are perfectly acceptable and you won't see that scorching once it's painted anyway. So, here's what we made today and this was a pattern out of a scroll saw pattern book. And you don't necessarily have to go buy one of those. Go to your local library and check one out. Of course, don't tear the pages out of it, but you can uh, open it up and scan whatever patterns you like, and you can pull them into 
uh, Inkscape if you need to convert to an SVG for like around the week rate. And yeah, I know there's other ways to do it, but that's the way I do it. Or you can bring that image directly into uh, Lightburn and then extract the trace the image there and create your own SVG. You can also export the SVG out of Lightburn to use, uh, for example, with a week rate, it depends if you have more than one laser. But nice little project, easy way to get some patterns. Uh, you can also download a lot of different patterns on the internet. You look around, there's a lot of free patterns out there for doing scroll saw work. And if you have a scroll saw, it's I actually find that quite relaxing. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, anymore, if, unless it's three quarter of an inch thick and on up, I'm cutting it out with a laser, especially if I have to do a lot of them. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger, in the loft above the shop, in the laser room. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.